Hi and welcome to Let's Talk Tachlis. I'm so happy to be here again. Today we have a very beautiful and interesting conversation with Dr. Shloyam Abinet. And I really advise you to be patient and listen to it. You'll learn a lot. Wait till the end. There's a lot of surprises in the content towards the end. And as always, I hope you enjoy it. We would love to hear more from you at Let's Talk Tachlis now.com. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, The Format Press. We invite you to join them and sponsor as well. You can see information on our website, letstalktachlesnow.com, of how to reach us. Thank you very much. Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Tachles. Tonight, without further ado, I'd like to introduce to you my dear friend, Dr. Shloyme Binnett. Dr. Binnett? Come on. Shloyme Binnett. You're not a doctor, are you? I have a PhD in psychology. Huh. That's very admirable. Can we, Jack, tease you, tease you a little bit and ask you, come on, you see this guy. You belong in Koilil. You have a beautiful family, wife and children. Don't tell me you're a doctor. First of all, I have a wife and children. I have a beautiful family. I was in Koilil. I was in Yeshiva. Um, yeah, I went... Uh, I went to the field of mental health. Uh, first, I went to school. I became a therapist, a me- mental health counselor, a master's degree. Then I went to my doctorate, which is a long, process. long process, which is a, not a discussion for this podcast, mm-hmm. but um, it's doable. Wow. And today, you see a lot of people Hasidic Shemeshing a lot going to the field, not necessarily a psychology level, but uh, a lot of social workers, a lot of mental health counselors. Um, yeah. So basically, I have a million questions based on your statement. Okay. Number one, how does the, what drives a chesidah man? Like we said, koil family, to go out of the box, let's call it out of the box. When you started, it was definitely out of the box. Correct. To go and become a doctor. Strive and hope and study and do the process. So I always say that people expect, uh, I get this question a lot, different mm-hmm. versions of the question, and people always expect uh, some dramatic answer, some, you know, horror story, uh, difficult childhood, whatever. But the, the truth is, you know, I had the childhood like many other people, quote unquote normal. I don't think there's any normal childhood. Um, yeshiva, you know, I was always in the box. I'm still in the box very much. Also, whatever that means. Um, but I had a, when I was a teenager, I had a big interest in, I believe it was a natural interest, understanding people, helping people. Um, I had an interest in particular in psychology. I didn't know back then even the word psychology, but I, 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 I put my hand on a lot of different, you know, whatever was kosher for Chesidish Abucha to read, uh, on different, um, you know, uh, reading material, different things I could gather at that time. So after my chasana, I was looking for different ways of, you know, what's going to be my future. Uh, I knew back in the day, a big thing was, was then, you know, real estate. It was before the 08. Uh, Still bo- is. Still is. <laughs> yeah, but then, but um, I had this drive. I wanted to do something more, more, more impactful. I don't know how, where it came from, why I had it, but this, is, this, this was the fact. And I felt just start my job and start start out, you know, like many people do. I want to do something more. It wasn't wasn't enough for me. Accomplish more. Accomplish more. So uh, back then, uh, somebody actually introduced me that there's a program in Bar Park that you can get like a bachelor's degree um, and afterward a master's degree. And I just it was a few months after my class, and I just walked in. Was Turo in Bar Park, and I walked in and I, I started asking them what type of programs you have. And they offered, they had a few programs. One of them was mental health, and I was like, okay. Wow. And the rest is history. Yeah. I, I, at the time, I didn't even think of where it's going to end. But it's always, it's like once you start, and I, I just love the process of learning. Still to this day, it's my, I always look back of the years I was learning and studying. 
it's just just being immersed in so much knowledge and on this you know learning new things and around people that are in similar interest um you know uh so the day that i graduated with my masters i was ready in the field because you know before you graduate you have to do the internships and all right. that um and i was doing some work and i i didn't feel like i accomplished what i needed uh later i found out a lot of people have that feeling and it just comes with time but somehow some way i just made a decision i remember the day in the moment i made a decision it wasn't even thought through i want to go for my doctorate and i just made that phone call and so to a few schools within a few weeks i just enrolled in a program i just continued how long did it take from so after the master to the doctorate doctor is a good long process it took about four or five years but i already worked in the field because i had my master's and mm-hmm. i was i was able to get licensed as a mental health counselor um so i worked already and uh, i so I, it was it was easier in a sense because i it was it wasn't like just going to school um but you know people always ask me what's you know what's the drive of a person to do what i do and I think there's no one answer to it. Every person has different drives. But I, I always tell, if a person wants to succeed, in, in at, at least going to school, going into a profession, which requires a lot of learning. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of professions you go into, it's field, you, you learn in the field. And some professions you have to learn a lot of, you know, schooling, and things that's so, it's, 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 it's out of your comfort zone. It's things that you're not used to. Um, reading books and li- listening to lectures and writing uh, papers. In a way. Yeah. A lot of new concepts, new ideas, especially someone coming from the Hasidic world, right. or even, even the Shia world. And it's, it's, it's not something we grow up with. Right. We grew up with learning Gamud and all that, but it's, it's, it's a, different, a different lingo, a different everything. So um, I think there's two main ingredients. You need to find something that really motivates you. And it's almost like a blind motivation, like a childish motivation, like excitement. This is what I want to do. And you don't look back. You just do it. Uh, can I stop you, man? Yeah. It's hard to understand why this subject is can sound like a childish motiv- motivation. It's really, in a way, it's a very boring and deep and even dark um, feel to be in. And, and to, it's interesting to hear that someone has at a younger age, the drive and the excitement and the thrill to master it and to be in it. What I mean by childish motivation, I mean to say, maybe it's not the right phrase. No, not, not, I'm not. I'm, but I just want to understand the deeper, say, the j- deeper level of motivation. What drove you to come to that? I'm actually the opposite of what people consider sometimes internal, real motivation, like to understanding, knowing yourself, like going deeper. I'm talking about the opposite of that. Just thinking of the dream. You know, you have to think of the dream. Like, yeah, one day, I remember. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm a little embarrassing to say this, but I'm not. So, you know, I, I can say this even here in front of uh, people here, that, you know, I used to have these visions that one day, I'll stand in front of a crowd of people and talk about psychology. Um, and back in the time, day, I was I was just in, in Gemana, I was in my uh, early twenties, and this was such a fine concept for me. But that was. Sometimes these hard days I used to have, I used to envision like standing on a stage in front of people wow. or sitting in a room with someone and just, just helping them and the person is like opening up to me. Just these the simple excitements wow. of that vision that, that I want to see myself one day. Wow. Um, in reality, it's not like that, as we all know. I mean, some days are like that, but in reality, things are harder than, than it, it looks like, but... I think in order for a person to, to go through such a difficult process, I mean, tedious process, so mm-hmm. difficult, tedious. It's both. Um, yeah, you, you want to you you find just a simple motivation that keeps you going. That worked for me. Could be other people who have different ways of motivating themselves. Another important thing is something, you have to be very resourceful. What I mean by resourceful is that there's not one way to, f- to do things. There's many different ways, especially today with technology. Um, when I graduated, I, 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 uh, I had a few friends who took me, uh, you know, made some flashes of Salachayim, sort of. 
um, and uh, they asked me to, to say a few words. And usually uh, somebody gets up uh, like a graduation party, they say, I want to thank my father, my mother. I, so I, 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 not even hopping, I, I just, I stood up and said, I want to thank Google <laughs> for helping me out. It's like, without Google, we would, you know, we were where I'd be. In other, in other words, you need to find these resources, people. You know, I reached out to many people that were not highly from the community because back then, right. There was this, this was going to be one of my following questions about feeling so alone in the community yeah. taking on taking upon of such a big project. But I'll let you finish the you thought that it, you were looking for people at the time you started saying that. Yeah, I, I reached out to people who, who went through the process or in the field already. Um, and what I found is for, for the most part, people who are in the field already are more than eager to help. Any, I believe it's in any field. I know in, in my field, certainly, I know for myself, over the last, uh, I don't know, 10 plus years, I've helped numerous, I, I don't want to say exaggerations, but tens of maybe have close to 100 people who've reached out to me with even little, you know, details, little help. Questions. Details, questions, or, or, or um, you know, sometimes they get stuck on certain assignments or certain classes, so they take in psychology or their mental health, whatever. And um, I'll be more than ha happy to help. And I always joke with my colleagues that I'd rather help someone in such a capacity, not rather, but sometimes it's just, it's much more exciting for me to help someone, you know, who is a student, they want to help themselves. Or and deal with the cases. Deal with real cases. Mm -hmm. But... Um, it's a joke, by the way. It's, you know, I love right. working with my clients. Of course. Um, but uh, so again, so I think uh, you need to really motivate yourself yeah. and, and find so, all these so resources. I think, I think even if we would conclude the conversation right now, it was worth listening to it because it's a, it's a tremendous motivation for people that really anyone and everyone, once they did jump into something with a real commitment 100%. and they set themselves up to... And I want to be clear, you know, I'm very flattered sometimes people think of me as a very smart person. I always joke because I, Hashem made my hair so fall out, so it makes me sound very smart. I don't consider myself a smarter person than an average person. I'm, I'm that serious now. Um, I, you know, I'm just a simple guy. If you ask my friends from yeshiva years, I was just an average student, normal, run-of-the-mill wow. person. It's doable. Everybody, if you put yourself into something... And, you know, you really immerse Focus. yourself, you can get, re really get to it. Wow. I, I would say you're out of the box kind of a guy. I remember you in the good days. I have to share with the audience that uh, Mr. Bennett is one of the founders of Traveling no, 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 I'm a member, my you brother were very, actually. You, I said one of them. You were very active. We met a few, a couple of times we met on the road and... It takes a lot of um, love and dedication and self selflessness to to leave the house for weekends and shabus them and to go make other people feel good about themselves, about Yiddishkeit. And I know that you were also a big contributor to Karaftuni, even before you were a lecturer there, before you were a hired. No, 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 take it, take it. Yeah, yeah. No, sorry. I don't want to take and away credit from me. No, 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 no. Everyone yeah. gets their credit. You too. Thank you. But uh, definitely to to go back to the subject of of your of your field. And those days, I think even to today, there's a little bit of an, a, a little improvement in the openness and the readiness and the eagerness of our community and society to deal with these issues. But back then, I would ask you, why wouldn't you become a heart surgeon or a brain surgeon or a foot doctor? Like if you want to have guaranteed clients, you want to book 10, 15, 20 appointments a day, do what's, do what's in, do what's popular. And to become, at that time, to become a doctor and a master in this field, I think takes a lot of bravery and, and I commend you for that. Okay, yeah, thank you. No, but yeah. really, I'm yeah. not here to flatter you, like yeah. you said. But, but today, I, that's, I, I want to go to this subject because I know lately there's a much more awareness in our community that people really have conditions and issues and they have to be and it's smart to deal with it rather than let it go and let it be ignored and 
for them to have a dark and sad life and an unmanaged life full of trouble to rather deal with it. Um, I want to tell you a quote I heard from my pharmacist two years ago. This is not today. He told me that more than 50% of his prescriptions, more than 50% are mentally related. Yeah. I thought he's... Truly, at that time, I thought that our that it, it came into our community a little too fast and too with their revenge a little bit, and people are starting to just throw around titles and codes and HDD and D and ABC, all kind of notes and names and titles, and it took it to, it took it to the next level of going to the pharmacy and going to specialists because. To think that more than 50% of our society are people that are affected mentally and need help and are not the norm and not, and not common, it, to me it was a little bit a shocker. Right. I know 50% of the population takes medication, but, but it's a big number at the pharmacy, at least in terms of giving out medication. Um, yeah, no, so actually it's a very, what you're bringing up right now is something that's very personal to me because this is actually the subject that I studied when I, I went to my doctorate. In order to get to your doctorate, you have to do a thing called, it's called a thesis or a, a dissertation. So you have to actually do a study and, and present it for, for a group of professors, all thing. And it's actually published, my study that I did on the, noise, on the topic of stigma. Mm -hmm. Because what motivated me to, to work on, on the subject of stigma, which stigma means basically a, a a certain negative right. or what they refer to as a mark. A stain. Stain. Actually, the word stigma comes, it's very interesting. Years ago, back in the Greeks, so they used to take people with mental illness, they used to burn on their face or something that people should to know because back then they had all these beliefs. Stay and away. So it, it, over the years, it, through generations, became this thing that uh, people with mental illness are outcast or whatever so when i went into the field as i said before i was young i was actually very naive and i somehow didn't pick up so much on this whole thing that it's so stigmatized um you know i thought that's yeah of course uh, right, there's a stigma about this but the people will be very welcoming the fact somebody's here to help mm -hmm. um i was also a little bit in a bubble because i was most of my days then with other you know, uh, people in learning uh, the subjects mm -hmm. and we're discussing it. And then I went, I went out to, to people and tell, I told them what I'm doing and people like, almost like, what are you doing? You're almost part of the stigma. Exactly. And uh, I never, I, I, t I told this recently in, in, in to my speech and uh, I, 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 I remember the moment that very Hush Veruf told me, like, what, what are you doing? He told me Yiddish like a basem that kid that Schmidt he got he said in English that uh, huh? that uh, you know a broom even, that even uh, new broom and you use it to sweep yeah it gets it, dirty it gets dirty so so in other words you'll get dirty from these people and everything so by the way this roof fast forward is one of the biggest referrals today wow. for mental health wow. but what happened was so, so when I did did my study so I looked at the subject of mental health and uh, on stigma. And I wanted to see what are the things, what are the factors that causes people to have stigma? Because I wanted to see what can we do to change it? Mm -hmm. So I looked at different things. And, and of course, the whole thing, but the main important thing is push it. People are just not knowledgeable. About it. They're missing the knowledge about it. So the basic education. So an interesting thing, what, what I, I saw in my data that... I looked at people living in the area, let's say, Muncie, Brooklyn, different places. What I saw that for some reason there was slightly or even more than slightly less stigma, let's say, for people live in Muncie compared to people live in Brooklyn. And that was an interesting thing for me of why. So uh, I went back and I, I looked at a very simple factor. How many mental health professionals are in Muncie? per capita, like according, mm -hmm. how many people are in Brooklyn? And I found that for some reason there were more mental health professionals in Muncie. Don't ask me why. Right. Uh, there were some more clinics there and everything. So that also told me 
because there are more people in the field, more people talk about it, so people are less stigmatized. Um, but what happened the last few years is, Mamash, everything Explosion. changed. Explosion. Explosion, because, you know, the different... I think it happened that a lot of people went into the field. There's many different funding from the government for these uh, different uh, programs, and, and a lot of people, a lot of organizations started because of it. Um, and also the, the fact that, you know, today you can read a Yiddish magazine and, you know, there are articles about this in the open. And, and the, the interesting thing is, that, you know, I go and shield, I hear people discussing these concepts as if they're, they're mamish, and they talk and know about it. And people read books about these things and, and I'm like, wow. And I'm sometimes in shock how people have so much knowledge um, about, you know, subject that, that you know, so which, which I think this changed a lot. You know, you touched on a very important thing. If it's over glorified sometimes, and I, I'm not a, one of these people that th think that therapy is the answer to everything. Absolutely not. And like everything, go for therapy, go for medication. No. No, but I'm a, What I believe, if you have an issue, just you have to figure out a way to deal with it. There are many different ways of dealing with it. And therapy is one of the ways, one of the traditional ways. You know, it's not for every problem. It's not for... Uh, you know, some people don't have severe problems, but I always say just start by looking yourself in the mirror. That's the whole point of going for help. But the, the problem is that person that has a mental problem, when he looks in the mirror, he's not the right judge to judge his condition and his, his deficiency. Now, I don't want to say deficiency because I don't think the people that have mental issues are deficient people, but I mean to say that the, the, this process of deciding that I have to gather myself and I have to deal with the fact and I have to deal with reality, even this is slightly affected. These people are usually less ready to tackle difficult tasks in life, obviously. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm going back to the same question. How, how, what was the bridge that connected so many people to yes, Make the make the move and not stay like they used to stay in the dark area of themselves and be and be closed and set about the situation condition. And it was a certain bridge that brought them to be seen. Yeah. They don't have the, the, the they don't have enough in, enough courage to do it on their own. Something really revolutionary happened here. I'll tell you a story that happened a few weeks ago. This, I, I want to illustrate mm -hmm. a point. Uh, I think th that's going to answer some of the question. So I was sitting in a group. I, I, le I lead a group of, of uh, you know, therapists, professionals uh, um, once a week, uh, like a supervision group, and we, we discuss things. And we're sitting around and talking. And, you know, in the middle of the group, somebody comes in. Somebody comes to the group every week. And... He walks into the, in the, into the conference room, and uh, he doesn't look right. It's, it's pious. He's one of the members? Yeah. Okay. One of the members in our group walks in. He, he looks, everybody looked at him like, what's going on with this person? It looks like he's coming for one, the whole night being up, whatever. Anyways, he's sitting in the group, and, uh, and we ask him what's going on. So he's, he's uh, you know, telling me he had a difficult night yesterday, and I'm not going to say the details because, um, you know, to protect the privacy. He, he had to help a family that went through a tremendous crisis, and he was there for hours, and he was very affected by it. Um, and we're sitting around the table, all processing it, and he was, like, very open and vulnerable. And all of a sudden, there was a member in the group who, uh, who lost his uh, father during COVID, and he's processing his information there. His own, you know, mm. all of a sudden his traumas come out. Shine, this is the one part of the story. The next day I sit in my office and, and I have a client that comes in. And the client comes in for a different reason, you know, he, whatever reason is. And he had a certain trauma in his own life that he once told me about, but he never wanted to talk about it. And whenever I try different ways to talk about it, 
So, so we talk about a. So he, he brings up a certain uh, news that happened that week that somebody passed away, and uh, it tells me. So he t- tells me that we talk about this news and it's so sad, and he tells me, "Nah, shine, this is life." And he goes, he goes further, and I was like, "No, no, no, no. let's 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 take a second. I want to tell you something that happened yesterday." But a person is, I tell him the whole story, the whole experience. I don't know why I told it to him. I, basically, I, I wanted to show him that, you know, everybody stays with their pain if you don't talk about it. Whatever, it's grief, normal, normal. To open and discuss. It's healthy. So this guy listens to me and he sits there and, you know, he thinks. And all of a sudden, he's, in this moment, he starts talking about his own trauma. And he started processing, opening up. And we had a couple of sessions afterwards. This guy started opening up. Now, it's not as a dramatic story. What, what, what my point is that openness and vulnerability causes others to be open and vulnerable. And this is, everybody can see in their own, you know, interaction with other mm-hmm. people. If you're open, the other person becomes open. If you're vulnerable, the other person is comfortably vulnerable. I think people, in their essence, know they are desperate to talk about their issues and their feelings and whatever. It's just the society around us has all these social norms, what's normal to talk about, what's not normal. Guardrails. And guardrails. And, you know, if you see other people talk about it, if you hear, oh, this is normal, and it attracts people to be more open and more safe to talk about it. You know, a big part is the safety aspect because if a person talks about their feelings and about their traumas, in shul right. and they're being stigmatized they're not going to talk about it and it's almost like the, the people could feel that vibe if it becomes a normal thing you know within context you know it's, I always have it's, it's not normal to talk about your traumas everywhere right. you know if I kid you know the opposite it's, it's, silly. it's, it's not, not only silly, silly it's, it's, it, it's, it's not it's, it's damaging yeah for, you know people um because sometimes you go, you go. Sometimes people almost like have a, a I don't say the wrong word, but uh, almost like a, a, an obsession about this. You know, they they have to talk about and every once, once they start opening up. Yeah, but um, I think the, the the whole environment causes people to be more vulnerable, and open. So it's really amazing that it became a positive, um, breathing new. Era, new, new, a new time in our life as people sh- become more comfortable to talk about these things and there's a lot of help available out there. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's, it's you know, whatever, whatever causes it to happen, and, you know, the question always comes up, you know, people were healthier once upon a time, you know, pe- people try to say, it was, oh, when we, you know, 20, 30 years ago, nobody went for help, everything was fine. And my answer is, first of all, I don't know. Uh, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The fact is, this is the reality. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and people are desperate today. To, to, people are desperate for help. And, and to unload. To unload. And the proof is, is as you say, in the, pudding. in the pudding that, you know, you can, I, I challenge people, call up any mental health professional. Unfortunately, there's not much, no one available. Wow. There are waiting lists and people try and, and it's 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 uh, and I encourage people to go into the field. This we need talented people to help people, and the field is wide open. To anyone with a heart, and uh, who who could who could go, go through the process of want to learn, um, and and just really learn and grow. Um, welcome. Yeah, I'm not only welcome. The field is desperate. To, you know, wow. you, you talk to any of these referral agencies. It's uh, the known to send to. Wow. And I want to ask you about progress. Yeah. We, we established already the importance of people having the, developing the comfort level to actually make the move, say, I need help, I want to be helped, I'm ready to be helped. But I want to hear more, I want to encourage our, our viewers and our listeners that maybe you can share a certain story, of course, without names and fingerprints, to some people don't yet believe that the outcome can be so meaningful and so amazing, so beneficial. Right. I want to hear from you, not me, our audience wants to hear from you. 
like we say, we call it a stock tachlis. Tachlis, bottom line. Does it help? Doesn't help. I was involved in a certain case, and the person told me, I need an expiration date. I need to know how long this thing, <laughs> yes, how long this case will become will will become to a success. Give me a time: two months, three months, ten sessions, eight sessions, twenty. I don't want to have an open check. He said it's not about the money. So people still have doubts. If there's a way to measure from point A to point Z or to somewhere in between. Maybe you can share a certain story and experience you had with a certain client to actually encourage people that yes, there is a, the, the, the sun is out there. We are almost reaching and almost, right. sunrise is almost upon us. So, so, so what? This is a very, very, it's not an important question. It's, it's, it's a load. It's not, not the question is loaded. It's a whole topic. It's, there's whole books written on the subject. How even to, to know if it works or not? But, you know, first of all, I want to tell you, I always say like this. You go, for example, you go online, you do any Google search on any company, you're always going to find reviews. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, who leaves reviews? Negative reviews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's a, you know, a company does a lot of good marketing, they'll get the, all the positive reviews as well. Right. But most of the time you find the negative reviews. So people always say horror stories. That person spent you know, so much money and then they, they sat in therapy for, for t- 10 years. Yeah, you'll hear the horror stories. And this is what people talk about. You know, and, and, and like every field, there are professionals that are not do, do, doing a good job, you know, lawyers and, you know, whatever, even doctors, you know. The, but the vast majority of people that, that go for help get help. Yet now, this is, it's complicated. Why? You know, I used to work for a clinic. There used to be a second, still there, a secretary, a very sweet lady, older lady. So she, 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 she somebody once uh, called her in on the phone and they, the mama, she, they, were, they had like tannas, like they, they were arguing with her, why is the therapy taking so long? Um, it's like a parent that the child's therapy is taking so long. And this, I overheard this lady saying, Mrs. So-and-so, it took you, so how old is your son? Like, whatever, it's 10 years. It took you 10 years to create a problem. Give us a few months to solve the problem. So, um, no magic. It's, it's no magic. It's like anything in life, if it has to do with personal growth, especially if we're talking about years of trauma or years of suffering from anxiety or whatever it is. Nothing will work fast. And in fact, if it works fast, likely it's not going to work. Um, You know, too good to be true, it doesn't work when it comes to personal growth. You know, sometimes you see with medication, things work fast, but when we're talking about real therapy help, a person really wants to work on themselves, it takes, it's a process. That's why... People sometimes get very stuck on this. Why is it taking so long? But the, the truth is, it takes a lot of practice, a lot of a lot of consistency to get to where you need to. Now, the question you asked about, get, you know, people always want to know a time frame, and it's a it's it's a very important question. But the the, the problem that that is, it's virtually impossible to give a time frame on this. Why? Because it, there are so many factors components components it has to do with you know not only the client the problem even if a client will call, tell me exactly their problem the first session it's never the case you always you see different layers different things and the causes and the causes and and and, and the, the environment right now and, and you know uh, um I just tell you, I had recently. I I, I was I was. Um, Come on, give us something juicy. No, no. I was to tell you just an example. Like uh, juicy. I gave a lot of juicy stories. Um, uh, I I was about to you know finish up therapy with a client, and 
you know, we're about to, you know, do like what's called a closure session. And the client basically walks in saying, you know, my job from the last 10 years, I was just fired today. So, wow. and the whole story, blah, 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 and this guy was like, almost like derailing, you know, he went through the process already, so he was in a good place. But, you know, that's a factor, for example. Um, you know, the, the thing is like this. Something like this can, can you throw in the garbage five years no, of work. No, 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 no. I mean, if, no. If, if they're very traumatized, they just barely finished a very delicate, long process, and suddenly they get such a bang on the head. So, uh, he, he, it's it's not like a of course it's an, an it's a individual lifelong. it's individual basis each story is a different it's person. a lifelong process working on yourself is a lifelong process nobody gets healed whenever you 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 barely gonna Even hear the healthy people have to constantly work on themselves exactly because mental health is something we all have right oh yeah and we all me too mental health me too not mental illness <laughs> okay. So I just made sure. Yeah, so yeah. People sometimes uh, we just use in general what mental. We all have me- our mental health. We we need to take care of ourselves, right. and sometimes we have our days just like physical or more. It, absolutely. And by the way, you know, you know that I I could I always always have a joke with people. I, I could uh, look into your mind. You had in the last month a day that you felt very down. That's correct. That's correct. How do you know? I don't know. So have a crystal ball. I have a crystal ball. Yeah. You know, the day that you fell down, you had like a th- little bit of depression. You're not depressed. It's not clinically depressed. It's not a diagnosis. Yeah? Don't tell anybody. Yes. Um, I was anxious today about something. I had, I had that, for that for that few hours, I had a little bit of anxiety. Again, that's not mental illness. But something like that happens consistently. There's a mental system existing yeah. in every person. And... It's operating. Operating. It we all have that. It needs lubrication, it needs maintenance, everything. it needs food, it needs gears, it needs everything. It's Absolutely. And, and, you know, guess what? Uh, you know, I always tell people, if you'll go a week in a row with very little sleep, you will not be the same mentally. I'm not saying you have mental illness, but you'll be, your anger, your, 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 everything, you'll be nervous, things will tick you off. You know, we, we just like we take care of our physical health, we take care of our mental health. That's why it's very hard to quantify exactly. You know, you know, a person comes in with an issue. So sometimes people come into therapy; they have, let's, let's say, a certain anxiety. That's that's easy to quantify. I say, listen, you have this anxiety. Let's make a goal, and we work through that. And and you know, after a while, how likely you know how, how do you deal with that? If you still have that anxiety, not it's very easy to see. But we're talking about very, many instances. That, a lot of it, you know, I see more and more now, a lot of things are due to childhood trauma or previous traumas. And, you know, something that comes to trauma, it shapes you. So what is what is really the, the, the measure of progress? So usually what we do is we go from, you know, to get you in a place where you're functional, really functional. Um, you know, sometimes people are very functional physically, from, you know, from the outside, but internally they're not functional. So even internally, you're functional, you can deal with it. But that doesn't mean you still don't have flare-ups. You know, th- things will trigger you eventually. So so, the, you, you, so therapy is basically a process. You go from dysfunctional to functional. You know, some people choose therapy longer than that. Some people, you know, uh, sometimes it takes... I, I sometimes take a few therapists to get to the point you need. You know, you, you, you go layer after layer. Sometimes you, you work Analyze with... Analyze the exact... Yeah, I sometimes work with people for a few weeks and, you know, trying to figure out a problem. And once you get clear of the problem, we can sort of come up with a plan what I think is the right thing. And sometimes I feel there are other people that could do a better job, whatever they... You know, certain traumas or certain... Whatever it is... Um, or sometimes, for example, I'll give you an example. Some people often come to me about marriage. So I don't do marriage, not couples therapy, um, because... It's a separate field. It's, a se- it's in the field, but it's right. not something I... Specialize in. Specialize. I never, you know, I, I never put myself into it as fully. Um, but I work a lot of time with individuals in the context of marriage. In other words, they have mm-hmm. certain issues that affect their marriage. So, you know... Issues like uh, you know, 
connecting to other people connecting sharing sharing these. previous traumas not letting them to, 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 to trust many trust things. all that but sometimes it gets to a point where I feel like okay this is crossing over into working on your marriage so at that point it's like our work is now finished let's you go to a couples therapist mm-hmm. work through things because it's ready jointly yeah yeah so uh, you want to hear a story about progress? I, I can tell you because be, the reason I'm asking because I, I was very impressed. You said before you had a closure session with someone. We are about to have a closure session, and let's talk tachlis also soon. Um, and I still have to drive home, but I'm very impressed to hear that a person can come to an achievement, to a moment, to say, "My dear friend, we've been together." three months or nine months or a year, you and I both feel and believe that I'm, I've reached what I had to reach and to give a kiddush and to say, wow, I'm healed. My foot was broken. I had a cast for three months. I made some therapy, physical therapy. I can now walk like I did before. It's an amazing, uh, I think the relief must be my into the high heavens. So uh, you want to hear something? I can tell you so many stories, but I'll tell you today. Oh. Uh, today. Out I, of the oven. I, no, I, <laughs> Still know, in the oven. So if you want a story, so I, I don't know if it's a juicy story or not, but you want to. I finished with a client today. So um, I'll tell you two things that happened today. Uh, so number one, I thought, again, what, what happened? There, there, was a, there was a boy, I'm going to change some details, that... Um, Went through some horrific trauma, not to, you know, not to go into details. And he started developing all these symptoms of going to sleep at night and didn't want to go to yeshiva, um, acting out at home, etc. So probably eight months ago, he came to me, parents came to wow. me, and um, we, we started working. And the good news is this child was very open. He wanted to work, and he wanted to share. Cooperated. He cooperated extremely well, and did some beautiful work. Now, it wasn't always so beautiful, meaning there were some weeks I felt like he's not working along, and you know I had to use a lot of creativity and different methods uh, to get that. But in the last few weeks, he's been doing exceptionally well. He still sometimes has his triggers, but he's doing well. He's functioning. He's going to hide. You know, everything is working, Bro. and. Um, you know, I sat with the parents, and, and basically the parents wanted to know so what. So listen, I said, you, child, you know, that doesn't mean this particular yeah. child will, you know, maybe one day he's going to, you know, things will come up and we can work. It's a process. That's life. So yeah, just give me one example. I think another example, I got a phone call today from a Husen who's getting married in a few weeks, um, who came to me five, six years ago. And I, I forgot about him almost like, you know, I, 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 people make an impression and, and uh, you know, what's, uh, you know, someone, uh, it was a long time ago and he just wanted to thank me. Wow. And, and I asked him, what's, what motivated to call you? It's, it's so, I, I don't get this. Uh, like, well, what was the, the thing? So he told me that he heard a speech that I gave and he reminded himself. Come on. And like, w- w- what's the real w- deal? So he told me that, uh, you know, the, the story was when he came to me, you know, he was misbehaving as yeshiva and this and that. It was, it was a, it was, he was in a very terrible matzah. And when he left, when I finished with him, it wasn't so successful at the time, I thought. Because I felt like I, I was burnt out with him already. I, I got to a certain point with him. Um, and, you know, I suggested then to the parents, you know, let's try for a while to see how things will be without any help um you know i i consider that i went to 50 percent with him mm-hmm. and he told me that after he finished with me that he started missing the days that he used to talk to me wow. and he's like he started realizing they had someone who cared for him and he was able to talk and i, I can't explain it but somehow this somehow gave me the koyach the energy to to, to want to work further myself and 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 he just didn't go for any help afterwards, but he's just the fact that this whole time we spent together a year plus I don't know how long it was, 
gave him the strength to 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 want to work on himself further. Right. So that's what I say. It's complicated. He felt now that it's time to thank you and acknowledge. He wanted to acknowledge the fact that, he that he's he Rosh Hashem. He's, yeah, he's he's getting married and then wow. and uh, really, he's doing very really well. Story. So, in other words, uh, he, you know, at the time, someone asked me, was this successful, this particular client? I was like, I don't know. Could have been better. Could have been better. But um, I, no. I just I just want to bring out the point. It, it's, it, it's a process, and it's and not, not something. Not always predictable. Not always predictable, no. But it's very encouraging to hear that people can actually find themselves in, in a much closer and better place in yeah. life. And I think that if we accomplish this goal tonight for people to evaluate, does it usually, should it be self-driven or, or do parents or siblings have the right and the authority to guide the relative or the child towards therapy? I'm not talking a young child, a 12-year-old. Oh, a young girl. Uh, so you're talking about uh, you're talking. I'm about talking if someone is is eighteen, nineteen, twenty four year old, and and someone around them believes and thinks and is convinced that they need help. Is it fair t- for these people to obviously in a nice and responsible and caring, loving way? Is it is it the right thing to do to in somehow slide them towards help or? Is it something that they can take personal and and be and feel very very um, hurt from? Hundred percent. That may may outdo the the benefit of the treatment. So this is this question. We sometimes sometimes I have to sit with families, sometimes hours, just to answer that question because it's so complicated. Because you, of course, there's no one size fits all. Because right. in one hand, you see someone suffering. You know, I, I, I said before success stories, but sometimes people suffer and people really have a hard time going for help and sometimes it's not easy. Um, especially sometimes with this more severe issues. You know, they don't want to go and sometimes they're burnt out from going for help. Also sometimes people, there's an image about them that they are perfect and they're image. good and they're happy and they're jolly. And deep inside there's the suffer and the 100%. system is rotten. 100 yeah. Um, 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 so, so it's a delicate line because sometimes you, you, when you approach a family member that, you know, we want you to go for help, mm-hmm. you know, it could really, really strain, you know, stain, put a stain in the relationship. And, and sometimes it's, uh, I've known, I've known stories yeah. beyond repair. Exactly. Um, I, I know a whole family, they got cheered apart, you know, torn apart wow. because, you know, the, the, the children, sort of wanted as the father sort of forced the father to go for help and of course it didn't work and some kids went for the father get kids you know it was it's not it's not simple um so my suggestion is always yeah i want to finish it this this interesting and deep session with a positive message to the world not to do i know there's not one once uh, cookie cutter style to answer all the situations, but I want to hear from you a concluding um, statement to bring out the benefits <laughs> and the hope and the belief that will outweigh some of the so, of the negative images and pre... So I'll tell you this. Two weeks ago, I gave a speech somewhere and I thought I'm giving a speech to a couple of hundred people. It was a, like a conference about mental health awareness. And, um, but I didn't know at the time that 20,000 people listened. Right. And, so, and it was put on a lot of different uh, platforms and YouTube, whatever. And um, uh, by today, I heard close to 40, 50,000 people already listened right. to that speech. Now, why am I saying that? Because during that speech, I said something, and I, I, at the time, I didn't know I was saying it to so many people. I told to all these people that I myself, I'm going for years for therapy. Now, people will say, oh, you go for therapy. You're a therapist. You have to go for supervision or whatever. No, I do that also. For personal help for myself, I go. Why? Because I have seen 
you know, people always say, oh, you have to go because you hear so many problems. No. Because I've seen one thing, that my success in my life, in every aspect of my life, and I can go back to the day or the, key, the, 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 the time period. period that it happened is, this, is the time that I started working on myself, from, on my personal own inner, inner work. I was all of a sudden became not afraid to be vulnerable, open, let the guards down. And that was a time that everything switched for me, even professionally in my work. You know, I was already working in the field for a long time, quite a few years, and I was doing uh, sort of, you know, whatever. I, looking back, I, I was just working. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it helped some people. Um, maybe. Um, I hope so. Uh, but I was working. And that was a switch because when I started really, as I said before, look myself in the mirror. Now, I'm not saying this because I want to, you know, just advertise this. Mm -hmm. And it's not something that uh, it's usually heard by people. But I'm saying this to say to people, you know, there's no magic to anything of this. this is, it's very simple. We all went through a life things and stuff. Some have more, some have less. You know, if you went through a life certain things, or you are going through a, through a life right now certain Currently. things, why just suffer in silence? Why? There are people out there who can listen to you, who can talk to you, who can help you figure things out. And it's not a weakness. It's actually a strength to tell yourself because it's going to help you in your own life, your own relationships. Again, I'm not here selling therapy. Come to me. No. There are, You're I mean, not giving out your number? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, um, actually, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's hard, yeah, because I, I always get a lot of phone calls uh, after I give, uh, you know, things like this. And it's hard to tell people. I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know much that I can't take. I'll them. have them call the Let's Talk Tachlis okay, podcast. Okay, so we'll get it there, channel. yeah. You got a good plug now. Um, so I was saying that, you know, it's just figure out a way to get to someone, do some research, and, you know, it's going to help your life in many in many ways. Yes. And, and, and the main thing is we got to stop suffering in silence. You know, it's, it's, it's these days that everybody that our family doesn't have problems. We, I'm good. I never had anything to do with these issues. We all have it. These all are over. Over. And, you know, we, we all have issues. And so when I say issues, I don't mean we're messed up. No. We're normal, healthy people who have issues. And it's worthwhile to take care of it. Beautiful. Thank you so much for the encouraging ending and for the entire session and thank you for this amazing opportunity for this podcast my pleasure i'm here to to make to make the world maybe a drop a better place and you definitely helped me do that thank you so much it's good all right thank you